Hi, my name is Hannah Joyce and my topic is the characteristic curve. It can also be called a sensitometry curve, Herder and Dreifeld curve, H and D curve, and D log E curve. A characteristic curve is a graph that shows how film responds to exposure with low areas of exposure, high areas of exposure, and contrast within acceptable limits. There are different parts of a characteristic curve such as the base plus fog, the toe, the straight line, the shoulder, and the D-max. Now I will draw you an example. This is what a characteristic curve looks like. Over here is the y-axis, which is the density, and over here is the x-axis, which is the exposure in logarithms. Now over here is the base plus fog. Base plus fog is density without exposure, or inherent density, meaning that there's density already on the film from the manufacturer without ever being exposed. Now over here is the toe of the curve. This is the area of low exposure and cannot exceed 0.25 on the curve. Just because you double the exposure or triple the exposure does not mean that you will double or triple the density. This is because the exposure is in log numbers, meaning it's an exponentially low exposure area. Now over here is the straight line or slope of the curve. This is the most important area on the curve because it is the point of latitude, meaning it is the range of exposures within diagnostic limit, meaning this is the area of optimal density on the curve. If you go above 2.5 on the curve, it, it will no longer be in the optimal range. Now, if you have a narrow latitude, that means that less information is being recorded, so it is closer to the y-axis and has a low KVP and a high contrast. If you have a wide latitude, that means that there's more information being recorded and it's farther away from the y-axis and has a high KVP and a low contrast. Now up here is the shoulder of the curve. This is the area of higher exposures or more density on the curve. So this is when you get out of that optimal range and get above the 2.5. Now over here is the D max of the curve. This is the area of maximum exposure. So once you get to this point, the film cannot record any more exposure. So once it gets to this maximum point, it will eventually drop down, and then this is called solarization. This is the reverse process of radiographic density. This is when it starts over with the next exposure. Now in digital radiography, there is a different graph called the dynamic range curve. This one is different because it has a linear response to exposure. So now I'm going to draw you an example of this graph. So this is what the digital graph looks like, and as you can see, it has a line, which is linear, rather than having a curve like the other graph. So this line right here, which is the center of the graph, is called window level. Now the window level adjusts the density of the image. So if you were to increase this window level, it's going to increase the density of the image and decrease the brightness of the image. If you were to decrease the window level, it's going to decrease the density, but increase the brightness. So here's another graph in digital radiography known as the lookup table. The lookup table is a post-processing technique that works with window width to adjust the contrast of the image. So if you were to have a more narrow latitude, it will decrease the window width, and it's going to increase the contrast and decrease the grayscale of the image. If you were to have a wider latitude, it's going to increase the window width, which is going to decrease the contrast and increase the grayscale of the image. So now I'm going to show you an example of both these graphs on the computer. So this is the original image, and this right here is the window width window level tool. If you move the mouse up and down, it will change the density of the image, and if you move the mouse from side to side, it changes the contrast of the image. So as you can see, the window level is starting out at 2059. If you increase the window level to 4079, 
it's going to increase the density of the image and decrease the brightness of the image. Now if you decrease the window level to negative 41, it will decrease the density of the image and increase the brightness of the image. So now, the window width is starting out at 4200. If you increase the window width to 7584, it's decreasing the contrast of the image and increasing the gray scale because it's giving you more shades of gray. Now if you decrease the window width to 3072, it's going to increase the contrast, giving you a high contrast image, and decrease the gray scale because there's less shades of gray. I hope you enjoyed the video and this concludes my presentation. Thank you!